The photoelectric effect is a phenomenon in which electrically charged particles, such as electrons, are released from or within a material, usually metals, when it absorbs electromagnetic radiation, like light. The emitted electrons are called photoelectrons. The following animation illustrates this phenomenon. It is worth mentioning that this phenomenon was first observed by the physicist Heinrich Hertz back in 1887. The obvious question that arises here is, can this phenomenon occur by shining any light on any metal? The simple answer is no, and a big no. But nothing answers questions better than experiments, so let's do some experiments. We start by shining light of low frequency, say around red, on a metallic surface as shown. We try to detect, by some means, any electrons ejecting out of the surface. For this low frequency we don't detect any photoelectrons. We start increasing the light intensity keeping the same frequency. But again, no photoelectrons were detected. Now we gradually increase the light frequency. We see that we don't detect any photoelectrons emitted, regardless of the light intensity, until we finally reach a frequency, let's call it nu naught, where photoelectrons are finally detected, but they are emitted with zero kinetic energy. We now start increasing the light intensity, while keeping its frequency at nu naught, we note that as the intensity increase, the number of emitted electrons, per unit of time, known as electrons emission rate, increases, but electrons are still emitted with zero kinetic energy. As a result, light intensity has no effect on electrons' energy, it only affects their emission rate. On the other hand, keeping the same light intensity, but increasing the frequency further above nu naught, we observe that the emission rate is the same as previous, which is expected since the intensity wasn't changed. However, this time, electrons are emitted with some kinetic energy. As a result, we see that the light frequency has a direct effect on the electron's energy. The frequency nu naught is known as the threshold frequency. It is material dependent, so it is different for different metals. As we have seen, if the light frequency is below the threshold, then no photoelectrons are emitted. If it is equal to the threshold, photoelectrons are emitted at rest. If it is higher than the threshold, photoelectrons are emitted with some kinetic energy. These results we obtained were very confusing to physicists at that time, where the wave theory of light was highly adopted. It wasn't clear how light waves could explain these results, because that isn't how classical waves were supposed to work. So, there was a necessity to find a new model of light to explain the photoelectric effect. And this what Albert Einstein did in his work published in 1905. Einstein considered that light is made up of small quanta, now we call them photons. They are massless and have no charge. The energy of each is h nu, where h is the Planck's constant, and nu is a light frequency. Einstein predicted that the energy a single electron absorbs from a beam of light is exactly the energy of a single photon. For the electron to escape from the surface of a metal it must overcome the energy barrier that confines it to the surface. We note that not all electrons are emitted with the same kinetic energy. In fact, the electrons emitted with the maximum kinetic energy are the valence electrons found in the outermost shell of the atom. They have the weakest binding energy to the atom, so they require the least energy to escape the atom. This escaping energy, we denote it W, is nothing but the energy of the photon at the threshold frequency, h nu naught. The maximum kinetic energy EC of the emitted electron is therefore the difference between the incident photon energy and electron escaping energy, and it is given by the following equation. As shown in this equation, Einstein predicted that the kinetic energy of the emitted electron increases linearly as we increase the frequency of the incident light. Later in 1916, Robert Andrews Millikan verified experimentally this linear relation between the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons and the frequency of the incident light, and that proved Einstein to be correct with his theory. After that, they were both awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work on photoelectric effect. Now we can easily understand our previous observations. Increasing the light frequency is nothing but increasing the energy per photon of the incident light, 
while increasing the light intensity on the other hand, is increasing the number of incident photons per unit time, and thus the photons flux. Last but not least, let's plot the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons as function of the frequency of the incident light. For frequencies below the threshold, the kinetic energy is zero, because, well, there is no electrons emitted. As we step over the threshold and go for higher frequencies, the kinetic energy starts to increase linearly with incident light frequency according to Einstein's equation, and the slope of this line is nothing but the Planck's constant h. The fact that light can interfere with itself, as in the Michelson interferometer, or Young's double-slit experiment, is compelling evidence that light has wave properties. Nevertheless, the photoelectric effect illustrates that light also has particle properties. Einstein's energy relation, E equals h nu, provides the link between these apparently conflicting descriptions of light by relating the energy of the photon to the frequency of the wave. Nevertheless, it is worth mentioning that, later, as the quantum theory evolved, physicists were able to explain successfully the results of photoelectric effect by treating the problem with what is called a semi-classical model, where the light is considered to be a classical electromagnetic wave, while the atoms and electrons in the material are subjected to the laws of quantum mechanics. In this model they didn't need to introduce the notion of photons. It's important to note, however, that this semi-classical calculation in no way provides an argument against the quantum nature of light, as there are many phenomena that can only be explained by the quantization of light field. But this will be a story for another video. That's all for now, see you soon.